Well, good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. It's good to be here today. I miss seeing everybody's smiling faces last Sunday. So thanks for being patient as we had to pivot to being online only last Sunday. Whether you're here or you're tuning in online from your living room, either way, glad that you're spending Sunday with us. So we're going to start with worship. So if you're in the house, stand on up your feet and here's Brandon and the team. It is good to be in the house of the Lord and worshiping. Sometimes we can take that for granted, but when you can't do it, you know, maybe you miss a little bit. So we're glad you're here today. If you're watching us online, hopefully you're worshiping in your living room. Well, let's sing to the Lord today.
worship in the Lord today if you believe he is the king of heaven and he reigns on the throne. That's good news for all of us here. All of those of you watching online, it's good news that our king is in heaven, amen? Well, let's sing this out. This guy's where we were and now we have freedom. Carry that kind of weight. It was my dream till I met you. I was breathing, but not alive. All my
across in the corner. It's currently lit up right behind over that way. And I want us all to turn to that cross, no matter where you are in the room, and sing, Oh, the cross, one more time. Oh, the cross. Oh, the cross, what you've done. It was more than enough. It was more than enough for oh, the cross. What you've done. The power of the blood. The power of the blood was more than enough for oh, the cross. What you've done. It was more than enough. It was more than enough for oh, the cross. What you've done, the power of your blood is more than enough. Heavenly Father, we come before you and we thank you for your cross and the actions that were done on that cross, Lord, to allow us eternal life with you and with Jesus. That cross means so much to us, Lord. Let us never forget the weight of that cross. Lord, we love you. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. You can go ahead and grab a seat. It's good to see you. It's good to be here, right? So happy Sunday. Um, I know many of you are online, and all of us were online last week. So thank you for your, your uh, grace and pivoting a little bit last minute with us last week. Hopefully you got the memo. Uh, if you don't get our text messages, uh, that's the easiest way to find out about if anything happens, like last Sunday where we, we were planning on being here live until about 6.30 in the morning Sunday, and we had so many staff members and volunteers that were dropping like flies. We made that decision to go online. Um, and we tried the best we could to communicate that out quickly, that texting is the easiest way to get that memo. So if you're not on the texting list, this is your incentive to find out, to stay in the loop. It's easy to do. You text HOPE NEW to 94,000, you get on that list, and... Um, that means if you're also, if you're new, you can do that and you get our digital connect card. So whether you're new or not, we want to make sure you are in the loop about everything that happens here. But big thank you to the volunteers that came in, help us run cameras and things like that while Michael was holding down the fort while the rest of us were sick. So, but we know many of you are watching online because there's a lot of people in our, our neighbors and our community that are, have either gotten sick or are exposed. So just Drop a line, let us know to pray for you. Um, you can always text back to that number if you ever have a prayer request or anything like that or a question. And those usually go to me. So that's the, uh, the, the secret there is if you're ever like, man, I got a really sarcastic reply. You don't need to attach like Bill's face to it. You can if you want, but it's probably me. Uh, but if you're, if, if you're ever sick or you have a prayer request or need anything, you can always text back to that and that goes to us. So easy way to stay in the loop. Um, if you are new, um, you can, like I said, you can text that keyword there, the digital way, or we have a connect card that's right in front of you. That's a great way to, to connect with us in any, in any fashion. So if you bring that by the hello table, if you're new, you get a gift. But if you need help with anything, you can always fill out that connect card and get in touch with us. If you have trouble signing up for the texting or anything like that, um, just put that in there and we'll be in touch with you. Does that sound all right? All right, well, there's a lot that's happening now that the year is rolling, and I want to make sure that I put a few things on your radar. One of those is today's kind of a tradition Sunday for us. At Hope, we have a tradition of our word of the year, and what that means is we every year we as a, as a church decide on this is the direction that we're heading with. This is a kind of commitment and prayer for the year as us, for us as a church, and our word this year is strength. And we don't mean like just suck it up and macho strength, we mean the internal strength that comes from having a relationship with Jesus to be able to withstand whatever comes with life and to res respond faithfully um, as in the ups and the downs of life. Uh, but there's two parts to this. Um, we also ask everybody as a church to do business with God, to consider what he might want to do in your life this year and to choose a word for the year for yourself. So there's a couple things you can do with that today. If you're on site here, we have little succulent plants out there with a little poker with the definition and Bible verse for our word of the year. And you can write, take that home and write your word on it and try, do your best to keep the plant alive. 
which we made it easier than many because succulents are a little bit more bulletproof than much of the things that grow in our climate. Um, but grab one of those. We also have big white flower pots out there um, for you to white, write your word on, and those are going to be staying around the campus here this the rest of the year. So you can do that on your way out. If you're online, you can actually comment in with the chat there your word, and I, well, one of us that has better handwriting than me will write it on the pot there for you. Or you can text back in too, and we can write that on there for you too, so you can participate from home if you're in your living room right now. Um, so just let us know there. We can take care of that. A couple other things. Big one is life groups. We're a church that believe in life groups because life is better when you do it with other people. Uh, the Christian life is meant to be lived with other people, and groups are kicking back off in the next week. So we have our life group leader meeting after service today, and we're getting things ready for groups for the year. We have three groups that are going to be starting the semester with Rooted, which is a great 10-week program that is the perfect opportunity to dive into a new group, to get plugged into community. And those groups are on Tuesday night, Saturday night, and a women's group Thursday mornings. So there's a few options there that are great options. Um, or we also have over 20 groups in general. So I, I'm your guy to help connect you with the right group for you. If days and times don't work with those three rooted groups, anything like that, I'm going to be out there in the foyer after service, and I'd love to connect you um, with the group that makes sense for you and help you find that home there. Uh, but you can always sign up at the hello table on that iPad. You can go to the website. There's flyers out there. You can grab one on your way out to and get connected to a group. Because those are starting back up. The Ruta groups are starting with the, a dinner next Sunday night. We were originally going to do it tonight, but we're pushing back a week because of everything going on. So next Sunday night at 5, those groups are having dinner together. So if you sign up for a Ruta group, I will feed you because I like feeding people. So sign up for those. And then the last thing is... Father-daughter dance is happening this year. After a brief hiatus last year, Michael is planning a great opportunity for dads or dad figures for four daughters. So I'm excited. I'm going to have my daughter out irresponsibly late and get her all sugared up. Sorry, Mom. We're going to have fun. She's two, so I have to be decently well-behaved. But on uh, Friday, February 18th, from 6.30 to 8.30. You can sign up online. Tickets are cheaper if you get them in January. So they're five bucks a person and then 10 bucks in February. So Michael has a great evening planned. It's a great opportunity for dads or dad figures to invest in the daughters in their life. So I want to invite you for this. I'm looking forward to it. It will be a good time for, for me and my daughter, and I'm excited because I don't have to run it this year. So I just get to show up and be irresponsibly fun and leave. So... Uh, but I want to invite you to that. Put that on somebody's radar that might come to mind, too, if, if they're not here with you today. And other than that, uh, thank you guys for being faithful so often with your giving and your offering. Go how God is generous with us when we trust him with what he's entrusted to us blows me away all the time. So we've got joy boxes in the back for your offering. And here's Bill. He might be a little scratchy today. And I don't mean it just as jokes. <laughs> <laughs> First service, Nathan only had like six or seven last announcements. So I like that. Last thing, last thing. All right? That's a, he asks a question after every announcement. Have you guys noticed that? Anyways, <clears throat> I am glad that you guys are here. I gave first service. I said this is like uh, the attendance is like an Oakland A's game. Uh, no one's here. Uh, but still, at least some are here. Uh, than others. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're online. I'm glad we were able to pivot last week. When I went to bed, uh, we had a skeleton group, knowing that it was going to be small with what's going on, ready to roll to serve the people of Hope Community and to serve Christ well. Uh, then when I woke up, there was like 40 texts, and one of the texts was from Nathan, like, yeah, Bill's adrenaline is going to go way up when he gets up in the middle of the night to go pee. And uh, like he said, we, we, we canceled the service. I'm just glad Brandon had so many things in place to do a quality online service. And not only that, as I know a couple hundred people tuned in at least live, and I'm sure more later, but Michael did an excellent job online, spur of the moment, to bring God's word and to honor Christ, which is, matters to me here at Hope. And so 
Don't know if you recognize Michael's a good pastor. If, just in case you didn't know the answer to that, he's a good pastor. I don't know if Michael's a good pastor. No, he's a good pastor. I don't know if he gave a dad joke because my computer cut out. And most people, when they're at home, their computer cuts out. They blame our internet, but it's probably your internet. And so I just got onto another computer. But uh, just to pick up where I've been going for the last two years, a guy in Florida got arrested for dumping, pouring ketchup on his girlfriend while he was sleeping. And this is not the first time he was in trouble with the law. He's an ex-condiment. You might need to let that catch up. Ah, 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 ah. We're in Matthew 15, carrying on with our Word of the Year series called Strength. I did like, uh, uh, there's two churches that I know that shut down last week. One didn't have, I guess, the capabilities to do online. Fortunately, we, we had the capabilities, uh, but uh, pastors were checking in to make sure we were all right. It was almost like for we go for two years and we're not hit by COVID at all, basically, at Hope. And then it's like the staff had a COVID party and we all got COVID at once. That's what it appears to be what happened. But one pastor who is sarcastic and has a great sense of humor, first service didn't think it was a great sense of humor, this, but he texted me and says, I just taped to your a sign to your door, it says, it says, Jesus wouldn't close the church due to a cold. Join us at Greater Hope Church just down the road. He likes to call his church Greater Hope Church. Okay. Word of the year today for the next several weeks. Obviously, we know we're down, and next several weeks we might be down, and just like life groups starting up for the next several weeks, just like partnering the next several weeks-ish, you know, it's just going to be messy. We're just going to try to move the ball down the, the field as faithful as, as possible. And so like Nathan said, he will be out there for life groups. You know, a number of people first service said they didn't uh, get the email or the text. You know, if you didn't get the email, you can just fill this out, put your name and email and just hand it to me. I'll make sure you, you get back on that email list or like Nathan said about signing up. And so... Man, so I got COVID. I'm not going to mention everyone that got COVID, but I got COVID, tested negative twice. I like when people were testing on staff and they said, uh, I tested negative. I said, I, I knew you were negative already. You've been a negative person for a long time. Uh, then I tested positive once. That's all I needed was one positive. My throat was thrashed for about four days. I had the worst sore throat in the world. It's in the Guinness book, in the world. I didn't sleep for a couple of days. I appreciate your guys' concern for, for me and my family. If I, took, uh, I, if I took all the meals that you guys wanted to give me, is I would have enough food for a month. And so thank you guys for, for caring for me, my family. There were some great NFL games last night. I don't have an NFL shirt, so I wore this. It's close enough. Don't give me an NFL shirt. Uh, but there's hopefully some great games today, and hopefully this is a great way to start your day. You're probably waiting for me to get going, but I've been off for a couple of weeks. I'm trying to get going too. <laughs> Verse 21 of Matthew 15, and Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word, and his disciples came and begged him, saying, send her away, for she's crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. And here is just a great 
story when we talked about strength, like Mike, uh, not Michael, Nathan mentioned, is the strength for Hope Community, the word of the year is the inner strength, the strength to respond like Jesus in any and every situation. That is so awkward for me to drink in front of you guys. Here, if you look at your bulletin, on, on one side, it's partnering. So we believe the commitment we ask every year for people uh, gives us and develops the inner strength in a growing relationship with Christ, helps you be spiritually healthy, helps the church be spiritually healthy. So we re-up every year, and then there's new people jumping on, on the boat uh, this year, I anticipate. Uh, and if you're new, is that the first Sunday in February is there's a lunch after church to help you get connected into some area of service that Nathan will be putting on. Now, on the back side is the teaching notes. Now, this story, I love this story. Now, there might be stories in the Bible that you like more than others. I, I like this story because there's so many different trails to go down and so many different things to pull out. I'm just going to pull out a, a few things. Uh, and So we're going to answer the question, not completely, but give you a nugget. What do we learn from Jesus? What do we learn from the disciples? And what do we learn from the woman? Now, the first thing we see here with Jesus, now just to, to, to kind of, so this story ends up in Matthew and in Mark. Very similar in Mark, but Mark 7, 24 says this. And from there he arose and went away to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And he entered a house and did not want anyone to know, and this is the reality about Christ, yet he could not be hidden. Josephus, the historian of a time, the famous historian of the time, said that Tyrenians were a group of people that hated the Jews most likely the most. And so there is definitely animosity between the Jewish people and these people, and so you could see it wasn't by accident that Jesus, the disciples, and the Canaanite woman are in this scene, and there's something for us to learn from each of them. Now, the first thing from Jesus, what do we learn from Jesus? Jesus responds to all humility and persistence. One of the commentaries that I looked at talked about the uh, uh, this and talked about the Bible is full, is the book full of faith. You have strong faith, you have weak faith, you have doubting faith, you have dead faith from the beginning of the Genesis to the end of Revelation is you see examples of good faith, bad faith. Here you see an example of great faith. Jesus' description of this woman's faith is a woman of great faith. Faith. What do we learn is that Jesus responds to all humility and persistence. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, when Jesus walked the earth, what do we see is he responds to people's cry and faith in him. He's alive, he hears, he's not deaf, he moves, he's not incapable, he knows, he's not unaware of what's going on. Now, I gave you a great book to read, uh, Live No Lie, and I know a few of you guys have gotten it. My son got it, loved it. Uh, another book that I'm reading that I'm not recommending is Preaching Through the Book of Leviticus. Leviticus is a book that I have a very difficult time grasping Still, even reading the first part of the sacrificial system is something I have a very difficult time grasping, uh, and, and that's a different story. But uh, it, the book definitely picked up when it got to dietary laws, and it really spoke to me. And then in Leviticus 19, this has always been the heart of God for all of humanity. You shall treat the stranger who soldiers with you as the native among you, and you shall love them as yourself. Kind of ties in exactly with the Good Samaritan. It doesn't matter if they're Jewish or Samaritan, black or white. Then he reminds them, you are a stranger in the land of Egypt, and I'm the Lord your God. 
is that all people matter to God and God responds, Jesus responds to all humility and to all people that are persistent. Then a popular verse in scripture that I don't think is necessarily taken out of context is Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil to give you a future and a hope. But I think the verses that follow are just as important. They're definitely important for us. If you wanna experience verse 11 in your life, then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Like this lady, like this woman, who is persistent, who knew where the answers were. Jesus responds to humility and persistence. Hebrews eleven six. without faith, it's impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists, that he rewards those who seek him. God is a God that responds, rewards. When we come to him, when we seek him, there should be the confidence in our heart that he'll respond. Now, the second group of people are the disciples. We say no perfect people allowed. We, we're talking about these guys, and we're talking about us, and we're talking about the people online. And so the second fill-in, when we look at this, and there's a, the way I would read it in our culture, there's a harshness taking place here. And, and, uh, and the disciples are like, I'm tired. I don't want to do ministry. I want to eat. And these people, this woman is, a, uh, is, is bothering us. Sign up, lady. Take a number. Come back a different day. And the second feeling is this. Too often we are spiritually slow learners. Say no perfect people allowed. We say come as you are, but God, uh, uh, God loves you too much to allow you to stay that way. Now this is not the first time they had this lesson. Basically, they had this lesson with the woman at the well. Now you see if the chronological order of the that I was reading is correct. You see after the 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 way they uh, kind of came to the conclusion, it was about three years with Jesus. Is three Passovers he experienced. And so after the first Passover, we get the woman at the well, a Samaritan woman at the well. Religious leaders don't talk to women in public and Jews don't talk to Samaritans because they're enemies. And so what took place at the well? Jesus does these miraculous things, talks about, speaks into the woman's life, reveals himself in, in a very clear way in, in scripture. And then the disciples show up on the scene when he's talking to them. In John 4, 27, just then his disciples came back. They marveled that he was talking with a woman, but no one said, what do you seek? Or why are you talking with her? Which, in my mind, I come to the conclusion that they had this lesson before also. They knew not to just to speak what was on their mind. And if Peter said something stupid, you know it would be recorded. And so here, again, after the second Passover, what, what people believe in chronological order of Jesus is that the faith in the Canaanite woman scene took place. And here they are. I'm tired. You know, you're not part of us. You're a woman. You're not the same color of skin. You're not the same tribe. Get out of here. And Jesus kind of goes along with it for a very short time. That second feeling, too often, we are spiritually slow learners. I'll tell you what Christ followers don't like, and I don't like it at different times, is living with the tension of loving imperfect people that are in our lives, right? Let's just say, you know, like the woman that was caught in adultery, Jesus stood his ground because that was her sin. It didn't become his sin, but he loved her, loved on her, spoke into her life and allowed her to experience the goodness of God in her life. There's times where there's messy people in our life there's messy people at hope in our life. 
And maybe someone will look at you and, and because of their, their sinful choices and their choice to do whatever, however they want to live, they would think of you like, oh, they, they accept sin way too much in their life because they hang out with that person. Or then what's even worse is a church that has just people that are completely like-minded together that never meet and hang out and befriend people that are far from God. And those people, we could come to the wrong conclusion that they're unloving. There's tension always at different times in our walk with Christ. And as you mature in your love for him and as your faith for him, you get used to walking in the tension. Now, a couple days ago, a couple of Saturdays ago, uh, I could tell I'm getting older because I'll, I'll come up with plans in my mind. And then when people want to change my plans that they don't know I have, it bothers me. Like there's this resistance in me. And if you're thinking, that's me, that just means you're old. You're getting older. That's the definition right there. And so in my mind, I... I have, uh, I'm gonna go run three miles. Uh, I'm going to watch my son's game. I'm not going snowshoeing. I'm taking the lights down. Not, there's not, not that I put a ton of lights up. And I'm gonna make sure all the boxes are back. I'm gonna make sure I record all the Christmas cards. We have a recorder of who sent us what and addresses and make sure I do, do all that stuff. And, and I had this great day of being productive. My son's game's at noon. I thought, uh, I'm gonna watch the game. And, uh, and all of a sudden, when I'm done with my run, is my neighbor, there's a text from my neighbor. Now, my neighbor lost his son a couple years ago. He's been here a couple times. He's been at another church in South Reno a couple times. And, and the text said, hey, uh, hurry up, buddy. In about an hour, I'm going up to Chickadee Ridge to go snowshoeing. Let's go. And I thought, I don't want to be a pastor today. I don't want to go, God. And we had this 20-minute discussion. Like, I am not going. I had this plan. I had this plan. I had the perfect day plan, God. And this is an interruption to my life. And so we had this discussion, you, 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 you know, it's, it's like, I could have got away with this. God would know, but I could have got away with this. And I thought, I don't want to go, you, you know, uh, but I want to be a good pastor. I want to be a quick Christian, uh, but I really don't care right now is the Christmas lights need to come down. The boxes need to go back and the Christmas cards need to be filed or whatever we do. And so finally I caved in. And I said, uh, uh, hey, uh, okay, I'll, I'll go snowshoeing, uh, but uh, I just need to be back by noon. I got my son's game and I wanna make sure I, I, I don't miss my son's game. And then I found out that he texted the wrong person. So I went through this 20 minute exercise in my heart of tension and hardship and thinking about it. Like, are you a good pastor or not a good pastor? And are you a good Christian or not a good Christian? But there's that tension that always lives within us uh, of doing ministry. And especially when we, God is calling us to do ministry when we don't wanna do it. Fortunately, I really like this guy a lot. He's a pretty funny guy. But there's times where it's messier, it's not at the right time, is what do we learn in this story from the disciples? Too often we are spiritually slow learners. Now, one of the things I read about this story, which I thought that has stuck with me for years, is that when you have a great athlete on your team and you're a coach, or if you have a great student, there's times where you just wanna push him a little bit more to see what it's really in them. And that's what this commentator said about this story is that Jesus knew what was already in her and just wanted to push her a little bit more. What did he say? It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Now dogs in this day and age are highly valued. In that day and age, they were not valued. And what's her response? Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. And then here's the great response. Jesus answered, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. What do we learn from the woman? 
we get a picture of simple and powerful faith. So often in the Church of America and the Church of Hope community, our level of confidence in Christ is extremely low. Our sure level as far as him responding, and especially when things happen that are completely outside of the will of God, that are painful and hard to understand, is that our confident level in Christ is shaken. Smith Wigglesworth, the, uh, the devotional I'm reading, says this, if you see imperfect faith, full of doubt, a wavering condition, it always comes from imperfect knowledge. Here we see a picture of simple and powerful faith. Here is a lady that had a better understanding of the character and the heart of Jesus than the Jewish nation had of Jesus. So often is we want microwave Christianity, we want strength right away to where strength is built into us moment by moment, day by day, three steps forward, two steps back. Here is the woman is saying to Jesus, I am not leaving empty handed. Is that I know you're the answer. So often is that our patient level is 10 seconds for the light to change or a minute for the light to change. How about Joseph waited 13 years before he got out of prison? How about Abraham, 25 years? Think about what you guys are waiting for. How about Moses, 40 years? If God is making you to wait, you're in a good company. Because God has not forgotten about you. God has not forgotten about what's going on in your life. God is not forgetting and can't. He hears clearly the cry of your heart and Jesus will respond appropriately when it's appropriate and he'll respond in a generous and gracious way. I love this verse, 1 Peter 5, 6. Humble yourself. Not think lowly of yourself or not think poorly of yourself. Humble yourself means to put yourself in a continual position, recognizing that you're in need of Jesus. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so at the proper time, he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Found this story that kind of went along with that uh, uh, verse, and uh, Lenny came up with this idea about each week doing a portrait of strength, and so here it is. A pastor in India was confronted angrily by a man in his office one day. This man made many unfair and untrue accusations against the pastor. After finishing his angry outburst, the man asked the pastor what he had to say. In response, the pastor got up from his chair, walked to the washroom next door, filled an empty basin with water, and came back to the room. The angry man was surprised when he saw the basin of water and asked what it was for. The pastor replied that even though the accusations were not true, that since this person was nevertheless upset with him, he felt the right thing to do was for him to ask for forgiveness. He then offered to wash the man's feet. What happened then, the man broke down in tears at this act of humility and opened his heart to the Lord. The pastor's humility was shown to be a strength and not a weakness. Now, we look at this story, and this is, uh, someone told me first service that this is their favorite story uh, of Jesus in Scripture. Every time they read this story, they, they cry. There's two stories in Scriptures and in the Gospels, at least the life of Jesus, that for whatever reason, they're impressed in my soul. Maybe it's what's going on in our society. The first one is where Jesus is asleep in the boat during the storm. And the disciples say, hey, uh, do you not care about us? And so often that's our thought in the storms with Christ. And right now, it, I think it's pretty prevalent is that do you not care about what's going on here, Jesus? And the second story is here. 
So what do we read? Crumbs. Like what do we, when we think of crumbs, we don't think of a meal. We don't think of it as enough. But I'm just telling you this, when there are crumbs from Jesus, it is more than enough. When it's feeding the 5,000, Matthew 14, five loaves, two fish, Matthew 14, 20, it said the 5,000, they all ate and were satisfied. We looked at the resources by themselves are minimal and not sufficient, but when it comes with Jesus, they're more than enough. We dial into Matthew 15, we get the feeding of the 4,000. This time it says seven loaves, and the fish, one fish, and he feeds 4,000. Matthew 15, 37, they all ate and were satisfied. Whatever Jesus does for us and responds in a way, it's more than enough. Whatever he gives you is enough. When Paul was praying for healing, physical healing, Jesus responds, speaks to him. And he says in 2 Corinthians, my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weakness so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Whatever situation is not going your way and whatever broken heart, however it may be in a relationship or a death or work or just difficulties in your own everyday life is however Jesus responds and gives you is more than enough. The importance of being connected to a church, a life group, spiritual nourishment, Spiritual friendship, the importance of being connected to a church, spiritual nourishment together, the goodness of God of worshiping together. The reason why we serve is because God gives as we give. And so we, we have many things in place here for you to experience Jesus in a real and life-changing way. And when we do that, we get that inner strength happening in our life. I'm gonna wrap up here. My friend Kyle's gonna come up here. We got a song, he's doing communion. Again, we have plants, grab a plant. I already know where I'm gonna put it, where I have my quiet time. We got plants that you can't kill, basically. It's just like your relationship with God, you can't kill it. Jesus is gonna keep it alive. And then we got the flower pot going to be up for several weeks. Write your word of the year up there. If you're online, like Nathan said, you know, send your word in. We'll put it in. If you're going to come over the next couple of weeks, I'm sure attendance will pick up somewhere down the line here. Uh, again, we'll write your word on there. We won't let Nathan write your word up there. Uh, when you see a word on there and you can't read it, you can say, oh yeah, that's Nathan. That's Nathan's writing. So we don't know what his word of the year is because we can't read his writing uh, at all. So let me go ahead and pray. Lord, I thank you for you being part of hope. Whether large attendance or small, you are you and your character is trustworthy and your grace is abundant and your mercies are new every day. Thank you for allowing us to gather today together. Thank you for giving us the technology online. Thank you that your word is powerful and true. And thank you for the group you brought out today. And I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. morning. Uh, my name is Kyle. I'm a partner here at Hope. Um, uh, recently, uh, I, uh, I read a book uh, that God is using to challenge me. 
Uh, since I'm not here to promote a book, I'm not going to give you the title or the author. Um, just here to be real with you guys. Uh, one of the sins uh, that I struggle with is uh, I like to be right. And uh, being right is, is in, in and of itself is, isn't necessarily sin. But when I'm right at the expense of being kind towards someone, then in effect, I become a stumbling block to that, that person knowing Jesus and having the hope of salvation. Uh, something else that I'm prone to do is to defend myself when I'm verbally attacked. Uh, when I do defend myself, again, I'm potentially being a stumbling block to that person that God loves the same as he loves me. Uh, anger is often accompanied with defending myself. Often I feel that my anger is uh, a righteous or justified anger. But when I get right down to it, I've, I've likely never had a righteous anger. And um, anger is always listed among the sins that lead to death, separation from God, or hell. Um, anger is not listed among the fruit of the Spirit. And when I think of the fruit of the Spirit, I see that all of these fruit, all of the fruit of the Spirit, uh, leave an open door for people wanting to know about God. Uh, whereas when I'm right uh, and it's accompanied with anger, it's uh, it's not likely that that person will be that I'm interacting with will want to know anything about God. Uh, people don't want to be told they're wrong. They don't want to hear that I'm right and that they're wrong. They want to be loved. Um, so when I'm choosing to be right over being kind, I'm looking the same as the world. And I mentioned that God is challenging me. The challenge is to be unoffendable, uh, which sounds impossible, and it, and it is. Uh, and Pastor Nathan referenced uh, a scripture uh, a couple weeks ago, Philippians 4.13, and it's... Uh, we're all familiar with as for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. And when the Holy Spirit gives me victory in loving people in difficult situations, then he is glorified and I can boast in him and not say, look at me, I was right. And when I'm uh, boasting at being right, uh, I'm, I'm a stumbling block to that person knowing Jesus. Uh, so the door is... Uh, to sharing the gospel is open when, when, when the Holy Spirit does give me that victory. And, and um, another thing that God is showing me is that um, when I depend on him to be unoffendable, I'm trusting him to make all things right. I don't have to make all things right. My job is to love people. And uh, by defending myself with anger, in essence, I'm saying that I've got this, God, and I don't need you. And uh, one thing I'm here to proclaim is, is God is trustworthy. Would you guys agree? Um, in every situation. Um, so um, should have done this ahead of time. One second. So guys, will you uh, please join me in remembering what Jesus did for every one of us, um, given his uh, body broken for us? And uh, the juice that represents his blood shed for us? I ask that you would uh, pray with me, please. Father, thank you for your great, great sacrifice, making a way for us to have right relationship with, with the Father. And uh, Father, I just ask that you'd empower us uh, to be merciful in every situation that you've already preordained for us to be in. Help us to empower us uh, with the strength of your Holy Spirit uh, to be merciful as you are merciful to us and, and that you'd be glorified. In your son's name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.
And your earth has quaked before Moved by the sound of his voice Seas that are shaken and stirred Can be calmed and broken from my regard
is well with me. God, you are good. You're good because you are faithful, faithful to your promise, faithful um, to the plan that you have for all of our lives. So may we rest in that today. May we trust in that today. And may we go from here believing that you are ready to respond to the persistence, to the humility that we have. So we trust you with that. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you need prayer this morning, our team will be in the back corner by the crosses. If you're online, if you need any prayer, you can certainly um, text that in as well. Um, but may you go from here today believing that as well with your soul because of the faithfulness of Jesus. Have a great day.